uh, I've been developing mainly applications that are under heavy load um, with a strict requirements on performance. So those were my early encounters with performance itself. Uh, I always had this need to always measure the, the performance of my applications and how they, they, they work in general. So uh, I'm currently CTO at Abstracta. Abstracta is a software uh, testing services provider, uh, which uh, basically, in, in, sorry, as a CTO he, there, I mainly work as a leader of uh, R&D, research and development. I help uh, in initiatives for innovation, and I help in general teams working with uh, technical things or any way I can uh, in that regard. So I'm here uh, presenting you a new way, or I hope an innovative way for you, uh, to generate performance tests from your Selenium script with a tool that we have developed at Abstracta. It's a tool that we start developing, but it's an open source tool that we hope is uh, the community involves in it and help us implement it and, and improve it uh, further. We, in this presentation, I will show you an integration between this tool and Selenium and also some other open source tools to solve this particular problem. Uh, something I would like to, to do before starting my presentation is I would like to thank the organizations for the opportunity to present us at this major event. I am very glad or very grateful for being a, a Latin America representative here. I would like also to invite other Latin Americans to show up and show the great work that is being done down there in the passionate and vibrant, vibrant community that is around the, there. Um, final note before starting, <laughs> I would like you to enjoy the, this talk. Uh, I would like you mainly to, to be eager to try these tools or this integration, look up the code. But most importantly, I would like you to come up with new ideas to help everybody to improve the software development and life cycle and help every, every, what everyone, ah, sorry, everybody uh, daily to daily tasks to be solved more easily and with less friction. So, our presentation. Uh, this is the outline. We are going to review a Selenium script, so you get to know uh, what this script does, or actually what the, the application under test uh, is about. Then we are going to generate some uh, script for load testing it using this Shameter DSL tool. This is the tool I was mentioning about. I will get into more details during the presentation. Then we are going to execute some load and review some statistics. Uh, after that, we are going to briefly review some of the additional features of benefits of using Shameter DSL. And we will wrap up with some summary and Q&A. OK, so now demo time. Let's start reviewing our tests. I will make font a little bigger. Let's close this. Let's maximize. Is that good, the phone? Everyone is? OK, great. OK, so we have here, this is a Selenium test uh, over an application. It's Retail Store. It's an open source demo application. You can download it from Amazon. You can search for it. It's a pretty nice tool, uh, application that is just a, a cart where you can check out products and the like. So we have here our Retail Store test class with a test checkout method which uh, basically goes to the home page, it adds a product to the cart, it does the checkout, then fills in information for the customer, selects a delivery method, fills in some fields for uh, payment, and then places the order and checks that the order is well done. It is all based on page objects. So as you can see, here are the page objects. And let's run this so you get a better feeling of what the application is about and what, how the test behaves. But before doing that, I will Disable headless so we can see the, the test in execution in real time. And we, I'm going to also set up some pauses so it is not as fast and we can actually see the interactions because otherwise it will be too much. OK, let's run it. And the first cross of fingers, let's hope it works. <laughs> So here we have the application. It has already selected a product for checkout. It is filling all the fields of the customer information in here with the proper process I've already set on the test. Now it is selecting a delivery method, uh, filling out the payment details, and then it places the order, and you get the final page there. 
Okay, so I guess you already, with this demo, you already know what this test is about. I'm going right now to put the settings back to normal to run the test in headless mode and also removing the poses. I introduced it. Okay, so now let's go back to the slides. What we want to achieve is this. We have our Selenium test we, that tested or connects and exercises our test application. We want to be able to generate a performance test or a load test from it and, all, and that performance test will generate load in the test app while the Selenium test is also running us to measure the front-end metrics or the user experience while the back-end application or the test app is being loaded by many, many users. And on top of the, all that, we want to have a dashboard to be able to easily vis visualize how this load is actually impacting the service or how it's actually impacting the front-end or the user experience itself. Okay, so for doing that, I will, I have implemented this Selenium Shameter DSL module here that we are going to use. This project is open source, it's already public in GitHub. I will share with you the, the link at the end, but let's add that dependency. This is an integration, by the way, the Selenium test is implemented with JUnit. You can use test and or, or, or whatever, but this particular integration is focused on uh, JUnit itself. I'm using JUnit 5. I'm using the latest version of Java, Java 19. Um, let's use the, let's add the dependency. Selenium, JMeter, DSL. Okay, uh, refresh here. And now what we are going to do is we are going to add uh, a JUnit extension here, okay? So for adding a JUnit extension, we do this and we private final. I will add a JMeter DSL Selenium recorder, okay? This is one class that I've been implementing in that model that I added as a dependency. And I will have to set up additional settings. There are many settings I've created for this module, but in particular right now I will just use the minimum that will be base page object. Uh, this base page object requires you to set up the class, which is the base page object for all the page objects. So I will set base page dot class. And now this recorder, we need it to be aware of all the traffic, all the, all the requests that the front end test, this test is actually doing. So we want it to be set as a proxy. For that, we go to the Chrome options, or the browser options, web driver options, and we set proxy, recorder, get proxy. Just with that setting, we have all set up to create our performance test. Uh, so let's run this. I will run the test, which already has the extension. What it will make, it will instruct Selenium to use this recorder as a proxy, the recorder will capture every request and every response to the backend service. It will capture all that and we create a performance test, a load test that we will see in a few. And why do we actually, or why the recorder actually capture all requests and responses and not we just run a performance test by running, I, know, I don't know, Selenium with 100 threads and the like? Well, one advantage or one of the solutions or the, 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 the problems with performance testing is that if you want to, to do a performance test of 1,000 users or more, uh, using Selenium will require you to have actual uh, browser engines running. So that means a lot of memory and a lot of CPU. By only capturing the request and replaying the request, we are emulating the users in a more efficient way because we use a lot less CPU and RAM, so we use less resources and allows us to easily emulate higher loads than just using uh, Selenium in a concurrent way or the like. And on top of that, we might also get a more resilient performance test because if changes happen on the front end, uh, as long as the request to the back end keep the same, you will not be affected, the, the load test will not be affected. So in general, you could have a more uh, robust performance test. So here is what the actual recorder has generated for me. It has created a performance test class and it has captured every request and it's using this API and this API is JMeter DSL. 
Shameter DSL is a Java API that actually uses Shameter underneath. You don't need to install Shameter, it actually comes with as a dependency. So you just add the dependency of Shameter DSL and you will be able to use this Java API pretty easily. Don't need to switch context through the Shameter UI if you already use Shameter on, on, on some time, maybe, late, uh, maybe earlier. Uh, you might notice that Shameter is UI based, you have to have drop, uh, drag and drop interface, and that UI interface uh, imposes some issues on, on the general users, mainly if you are an, on an ADE. Having a Java API is easier, is simpler, is faster, and in general, is also better for maintenance and for reviewing the, 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 the general load test. You can see every request, all the settings in here, you can even get all the options for every element here, you can get all inline documentation, you don't need to go to a web page to review what are all the options for each element, you don't need to, we also provide some tips even in the Java docs. Uh, we also have tried in this API to greatly simplify Shameter usage itself. Shameter has a lot of knobs and things that you can tinker about. Here we provide with the basic contract, which is the most use case. And for some other use cases, for example, if you want to do a post here, we already uh, let you know that you will need to require to set a body and a content type. In Shameter, you might miss setting some of these settings. So the API in general is more simple and guide you through the process of creating a performance test. Uh, that being said, Shameter uh, itself is it's a great tool. It provides a lot of flexibility. It has support for many, many protocols. So it's very powerful in general. And there are also a plugins extension which allows you to implement further features. So by using Shameter DSL uh, on top of Shameter, you get all those benefits and can even extend it further. So here we have our performance test which goes to the home page. We can see here it does a post uh, to the cart with a product ID. This is actually adding the, the product to the cart. And then we can see that it does a checkout with a post, all the information. So it's pretty easy to identify from what we have done on the test, what actually generates uh, in, the, in the backend or in the performance test. Uh, one note, here you will see the product ID. In general, when you do performance testing or when you have a, a, a load test, you will avoid having fixed values because otherwise uh, maybe the IDs change in the future or something might change. And you, in general, use what we call correlation rules, which allows you to extract information from previous uh, responses and use the, those information in request. I will not get in that, into that detail in here, just I, I want to say that this extension or this model that I created already provides you with the means of creating such correlation rules. In general, here you would prefer using a correlation rule which will automatically add some extraction and replacements on the testman and make your testman more performant, or sorry, more robust. But in this case, as it doesn't affect the actual test, I will just get with it. Uh, something additional that is, has been generated is this InfluxDB listener. So this is actually used for collecting all the metrics that are generated when we send a request to the backend. This will collect all the information that Shameter generates, all response times, errors, uh, additional metrics like body size and the like, and it will send to InfluxDB. InfluxDB is a database in some sense, and you can use on top of InfluxDB other open source tools like, for example, Grafana or like to create nice dashboards. So this is related to, to what I mentioned, our goal. We want to have a dashboard to be able to visualize how the, the application is behaving and download. Okay, but before doing that, okay, sorry. One last thing, we can see that we are running our Test plan. Test plan is the, the concept that Shemeter uses for, for a load test, in, in fact. And then we can even do assertions on the general statistics that we collect uh, from the performance test. For instance, this test will fail if there are any errors. That is a nice way uh, Shemeter DSL will also improves a lot on the ability or native capacity uh, to be able to run the test in a continually uh, fashion like doing continuous performance testing. By doing this, 
You can just set up your requirements or your criteria here. You can use also response time to check that the response time is under a certain threshold. And you set that up. And then your continuous integration server will automatically, when it runs the test, it will fail or pass according to your criteria. So this is a good approach in general to do a continuous performance testing. And using Shemit or DSL, you don't need to install any plugins. You sh it just integrate with SheUnit, SNG, or whatever. And you get all the integration built in uh, by Maven or Gradle, and also the integration with SheUnit reporting on CICD. So get all those benefits without having to do much effort on that regard. OK, so now let's try our performance test. But we are going to try it just with one user and one iteration. So we are going to just run one, one iteration of the flow. But before doing that, let's add a, an element that Shemit or DSL provide. That is the resource tree, tree visualizer. This allows us to review each request and each response and verify if everything is OK, if the request is actually what we expect and the response as well. This is usually used for debugging or trying or validating the, the execution. Once you have an actual run of a load, when you run with many users and many iterations, you will actually want to remove that because it, it generates a, too much information. And it also is a graphical interface. So here, uh, we see that it has provided this with this UI, uh, where we can check uh, all the metrics. We can check the request, uh, all the information there, and also the response. And we can see, for example, here the post with the product ID, and we can also see the post, the post with the checkout. So the test plan looks nice. One thing here, if any of the requests had given me a response code that is a, an error code, like a 400 or 500, this will mark the, the request as red. So it's easy to identify when you have something that is not working properly. OK? So OK, I think we are done with that. Let's re-enable this. And be, before going any further, let me show you so we get the idea better. <laughs> this is what we have done so far. So we have, again, our Selenium test and our app front end. We have used our recorder. We have added our recorder, which has connected as a proxy between the app front end and the back end. It has captured every request and has generated a performance test using Shameter DSL. This Shameter DSL is configured to send all the metrics to InfluxDB. And on top of that, it will also, you see this arrow here, it will also use the Selenium test. This is our next step on the, on the code. So here, you will see in the main method that we have some small logic in there. But it actually configures to run the backend performance test, which is the test that we have recently shown, all this Shameter DSL code. And also, we'll run the front-end test for a duration of five minutes. So it will run the performance test. And through, during this time of five minutes, it will run the front-end once and once and once again. And it will use the base page object. So it uses the front end. It will run the, the front end test, the Selenium test. And it will capture the time it is taken in each page object. That time taken will allow us to measure how the performance, how this load on the back end uh, is impacting the, the user experience. It will allow us to measure how, each, how much time it is spent on each page while we are generating a lot of load to the application. Okay. So some things I need to do before actually running the test, before going to that, we are going to change it because it's just with one user and one iteration. That is not actually a load test. So let's do a thread group. OK, and we are going to run, for example, 10 users and do that for one minute and then run maybe 20 users for one minute and then 50 users for one minute. I will, no, for three minutes. OK. Let's add the children here. And we are all set. Everything is green. <laughs> OK. So now, an, an additional thing that I have to do, I have to set up all this configuration for if InfluxDB to connect for, to this InfluxDB that I have locally. I will just copy paste here. Here in the readme, you have all the steps that I've, I've done 
Also, you have instructions on how to you do correlations, for instance. So if you go to a repository, you will have all this guide in there and all this setup in there. OK, so I have to copy this in here. Let's, OK. And I think we are all set. Let's, let's cross finger for the third time, I think. <laughs> OK, so now we are actually going to run our performance test while running also the front end test. And for visualizing this, let's go to, I will have to exit this. Let's go to a Grafana. I have already configured a Grafana instance, which is connected to InfluxDB, and I've already configured as well. Oh, I missed, sorry. I will have to stop this. I miss disabling the recorder. <laughs> That is something here. I will put the front end test back to the normal because I don't want to record. I just want to use it for running it. And then we run the performance test again. Okay, it's already started. We see that we have cancel here, uh, our previous execution. And now we are going to see that here is all the backend information that we are collecting from Shameeter. And we should see on top of here the front end. Yeah, here. You see the front end metrics as well. These metrics are collected from the Selenium script that is being run and instrumented with this page object. We can see every single page in here and see all the metrics. See here, for instance, the home page is taking a long, a long time, quite a long time. Well, it seems that we already have errors, so our test failed pretty soon, which will not allow us to see much information uh, aside from seeing that the home page is actually taking a long, a long time. Um, but uh, we also see there are uh, many, uh, here we can see each of the requests on the back end, and we actually see all the errors during time. Uh, we can see also what is the, the, the root source of the error. We are getting an internal server error on the backend. So with this, uh, you can also see here how much load we are imposing on the backend. Here is with 10 users. Uh, we are loading up to 20, and then afterwards it should be 50. But in here you can see that we have actually <laughs> stress our application. It didn't. It even didn't get to 20 or 50. At 10, it just start failing. And you can get all the metrics in one place. You can visualize how the load on the back end is actually impacting the front end, and you are, you can see all the metrics in this nice dashboard. One thing about Grafana and InfluxDB is that you can customize your, t uh, your dashboard in any ways. You can collect information, you can compare historical runs. So this is pretty nice to integrate when you have a continuous integration server where you can compare different runs and see how changes on your application or in your test are actually affecting the, the application during time. Okay, I will just cancel this execution and now one thing that you may do after this is that if you were not able to stress your application, uh, you can use, in, in general, using just one machine might not be enough to stress your application because you are limited by the resources you have in your computer. Usually when you want to run an actual load test, you will want to use a cluster of machines running load, generating load to one application. For this, in Shemeter DSL, we provide adapters for different options. One is PlaceMeter. PlaceMeter is a service that allows you to run your ShayMeter test at scale in a, in a cloud platform they provide. And you can even run it from different locations. They provide nice reporting. That is one option we already provide as a plugin or as a dependency in ShayMeter DSL. You can also use Octoperf, which is, has a similar uh, functionality. Or you may even use your own cluster. You can set up your own cluster with Shameter provided tools, it's open source, and then you can use that cluster to run it. I will show you how very briefly how it will look like to use BlazeMeter. You add a dependency here, you add the Shameter DSL BlazeMeter dependency, for instance, yep, that version. And then what you will usually do is going to the performance test. 
here. And instead of run, which uses the machine where this test is running, uh, we will use run in. And here, you will see that you have a blaze meter engine. And this blaze meter engine requires me to set up system to set up a token, uh, which is authentication with Blaze Meter services. Just adding this, you can run your performance or your load test at the cloud. And it's, I, I, I don't need to do that, that much. And you get nice reporting and execution. For example, here is the Blaze Meter uh, use case. You can have a, something simil similar to Octoperf. We are looking in the future to support other or to add uh, adapters for, for other cloud providers or cloud, uh, Shameter cloud services. We also provide this user guide in Shameter DSL, uh, which guides you step by step on the different features that the Shameter DSL provides. And it's very helpful. It's, you don't need to know about Shameter to start using Shameter DSL. This guide already provides you with the insight of what each part is and also provides tips and warnings about different usages or pitfall, common pitfalls that you may uh, look uh, while using Shameter or Shameter DSL itself. And for example, here is the run at the scale that you can see how you set up and all the, the screenshots there of some executions. Okay, that's good. Let me go back to the presentation. So now, Shemeter DSL, some additional features. Well, as I mentioned, you can easily scale or ha have demonstrated in some sense. <laughs> you can easily scale your performance test using Blaze Meter, Octoperf, or the OSS distributed engine. You can also specify flexible low profile, so you can specify different uh, number of users and times. You can uh, specify also requests per second. We also provide some additional tools on top of it. For example, there is this shmx 2 dsl tool, which allows you to convert existing Shameter test to this DSL code. And you can go also go around and generate from the DSL shmx files, so Shameter files, uh, which allows you to get all the benefits of Shameter of the Shameter ecosystem. There are many tools in Shameter that allows you, for example, recorders, converters, and the like. So this tool will allow you to use DSL right after you have your ShameX. We also provide a recorder. <laughs> it's not that recorder, the, the, this recorder that I've shown you, it uses most of the logic that is in this recorder that I show you, but it's a command line tool that you can easily use and greatly simplifies the recording process of generating performance tests. It opens a browser and you can go over your application and get a performance test. It also, Shemitor DSL, as I already mentioned, has native integration with CICDs. You can use whatever uh, testing library you want. Uh, it also easily integrates, integrates in the in development pipeline. Uh, if you have already a Java code, it's easy to integrate. It's just a dependency. And it builds on top of Shemitor, so you get all the popularity, all the documentation of Shemitor all the ecosystem, all the tools are built around it, all the flexibility and extensibility provides. There are a ton of plugins, as I already mentioned, a ton of protocols. And on top of that, you also get the Java ecosystem support. You can even include Java code inside your uh, performance test, and you can easily customize or even extend Shameter easy. So as a summary, we have created our uh, Shameter DSL test from our Selenium test and test app. We have uh, sent all the information to InfluxDB and then to Grafana where we can collect and review all the execution. And here are some resources. There is the repository for this demo. There is also the repository for Shameter DSL. Please give us an, a star that allows more people to get to know this tool and also help us to understand if the community is interested in the tool so we can invest more on this. We would like also to call you for, for contributions. I mean, we see as a contribution not only if you send a pull request, we also consider a contribution if you ask questions, ask for improvements and the like. That will help us a lot to focus our efforts on where they matter. And we also provide, we have a Discord channel where we, you can ask questions or can comment or, or anything. So uh, in general, as a, as a closure, I, 
we think that Shemitar DSL and this particular integration is a great way to unify two big communities, the Selenium community and the Shemitar community. And um, it makes it makes it easier to collaborate between developers, performance experts, and automators. So we think it's a good way to take all the benefits of these two communities, leverage their strengths, and help each other. So now, thank you, and it's time for Q&A. Thank you. If you have any question, please uh, raise your hand, and then the microphone goes there. There's one. Simulate. Sorry. Can yeah, you repeat? Sorry, sorry. Once again. So um, let's say that if I want to simulate about 500, you know, users, then how do I uh, figure out that how many load servers? That's, that's a good question. In general, that, that, that is named calibration in performance testing. It's a thing that it depends on the protocols and the requests that you are making. But in general rule, these cloud providers allow a uh, advise you to have like as a limit 250. So you might try with 250 and then see how does it behaving on your computer, how much resources it's taking. If you see that it's taking too much resources and you're saturating your computer, then you lower a little. But if you see that you are, have plenty of resources, you can increase more. So it's kind of a, a try and an error. But in general, like 200 or around there is a, a, a nice or a general rule for Shameter itself. <clears throat> uh, does the Selenium recorder work with uh, .NET web driver? That's a, a good question. Uh, the integration I've done is uh, for JUnit mainly um, in Java. The JMeter DSL uh, is a Java library. Uh, if you use .NET, if you set it as a proxy, you could use the recorder because the recorder is just a proxy. You could capture all your requests and generate the performance test, but it will generate a Java code. So you will need kind of mix .NET that, and Java. That separate recorder, would that be an alternative? Then? No, it's, it's, this recorder I mentioned to you, or the, the, the one I've shown, is, is a JUnit extension. But we provide a module that you can just use it and run it. It will uh, pop in, 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 in a port. Then you connect as a proxy to that port, and you can record everything in there and generate the, the DSL code. When I implement uh, this DSL into my existing framework, sometimes, I mean, most of the time, framework will do some ex extra things like taking screenshots, connecting to a DB, sending emails, all those extra time. Uh, so do you have any suggestions or best practices to remove, I mean, will that affect the performance test? Like, you know, implicit weight, for example, taking, you know, somebody's uh, providing that like implicit weight in a wrong place, that will wait, right? So is there, is, will it affect your performance test, like extra things that are part of the framework, Selenium framework? Okay, the, the front-end test will run a, a, as it is right now. Regarding the back-end test, if you want to, to generate load for other things like, I don't know, database, if you want to generate queries while the, the, the execution of the front-end is running, or if you want to send emails uh, using SMTP, you can use, uh, for instance, uh, Shemitar DSL already provides a JDBC connector, which you can use to run queries while running the performance test. That might be an option. Shemitar already provides an STMP uh, protocol on samplers, on top of that, the DSL doesn't yet implement a built-in solution for that, but we provide wrappers, which greatly simplifies or allows you to easily integrate existing Shemitar functions on the DSL. Uh, but if you need the SNTP, for, for instance, we will encourage you to ask for them in the GitHub repository and say, I need the SNTP for this use case, please. I need these features, and we, we can uh, prioritize higher that and, and implement that. I don't know if this answers your question mostly, or <laughs> I hope it does. 
Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> what is the maximum load that we can generate using this tool, like uh, the load generator? Uh, is it dependent on the J meter capability here, or is the, maxi a, the maximum load? Yeah. If you use a cluster, it's kind of limitless. You could use any generate any load that you want. Uh, you will have to pay in most cases, or you will have to set up a cluster that might be expensive to set up. Uh, the load that you can generate from one machine, again, it goes again with, with that other uh, question. Uh, it might be around 250, but it highly depends on the type of request that you are doing or not. I, I have run a test on my machine, and it depends also on your machine, your resources on your machine. But I have run tests with 500, and I haven't had any, any problems. It depends on, on each profile of the, of the test that you run. But in general, yeah, you can run any, any load test if you use a cloud, a cloud service. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what about uh, authentication? Uh, how is this uh, set into uh, the performance test? Uh, you know what I mean? Tokens, uh, everything that has to do. It's uh, automatically uh, handled or managed? Yeah, good question. Uh, if you use basic authentication, uh, this recorder will automatically identify it and register it, and you will see in the performance test the authentication. You will usually want to externalize that because you don't want the credentials in there in the code, but that is easy to do. Regarding other types of, of authentication, for example, token-based authentication, you will usually need to use these correlations that I mentioned earlier. So we, you will need to extract something from a response and then do some processing and put it in a following request. So in general, that's the way. Uh, Shemeter already provides authentication for Kerberos, some old authentication mechanism. Uh, if you want to use OAuth, you will probably need to check the request and do the, these correlations I already mentioned. But yeah, he supports it. <laughs> Um, I've got a question real quick. How do you manage um, iterating through massive like sets of data where uh, there's a case where you might have to run different kinds of unique data through a system without having without being able to reuse some stuff? So how, how do you how do you iterate over that kind of thing? Great and, question. And as well. Thank you. There is in Shimeter the usual way of uh, implementing this, and you can here uh, see something about that in request generation here. CSV as an input data of requests. You can generate a CSV, which will provide like all the a matrix of variables and values. So you can set, okay, this is the user. I want all these users, and these are the password for those users. And you can use this CSV data set, where you specify the CSV file. It will automatically generate uh, the variables, and then you can use it like in here, the variables generated from that CSV file. So that will allow you to have different requests on each iteration or each different virtual user. Very cool, very cool. Any other questions? I don't know if I see any. Um, fantastic, well this is a really great use case. I think it's, it's great advice. Well done, thank you very much, Roger. Thank you.